Do you want to make your own custom Minecraft plugins? Well, in this series, we're going to be covering just that. Now, before we start, it is very important that you already know the basics of Java programming. If you don't, then no worries. I have a complete Java course that you can watch for free by starting a free trial on Skillshare. A link to that can be found in the description and in the pinned comment. Now, assuming you already know Java, let's get started by making our very first plugin. Now, to make our project a lot easier to use, we can install an IntelliJ plugin called Minecraft Development. A link to this can be found in the description if you want to install it from this website, or you can simply install it through IntelliJ itself. To do this, we can go to our Plugins tab right here and make sure you're selected on Marketplace and then do a search for Minecraft. You want to find Minecraft Development right here and then click on Install. And then we have to restart IntelliJ, so go ahead and click on Restart IDE. Now afterwards, we can create a new project. And then from here, we see Minecraft on the left. Go ahead and click on that. And then click on Spigot Plugin. Click on Next. And then enter in all the information you want here. Now for the Group ID and the Artifact ID, you can enter whatever you want. I'm going to name mine Worn Off Keys Tutorial for both of them. And then afterwards, I can click on Next. Now from here, you can configure your main class name. I'm going to keep mine like this. But of course, you can change this if you want. You can also change your plugin name and the Minecraft version. For this series, we're going to be using 1.18. And then you can add in whatever extra information you want in here, such as a description, your name, your website, and other information like that. So fill out anything you want here and then click on Next. And then now we can select the exact path we want for our project to live. So I'm going to go ahead and select my Getting Started folder. And then from here, I can click on Finish. Now our plugin is ready to go. The only thing we need to do now is to set up a basic local server. So if you already have a server set up, then go ahead and use the YouTube player to skip to the next section. So if you go to getspigot.org or you just Google Get Spigot, you should find this website here where you can download version 1.18.1. I'm going to download this exact version because that's the version that the IntelliJ plugin created our plugin for. So I can go ahead and click on download right here. And then I can click on Spigot 1.18.1 right here. Make sure you don't click on these ads. They're not necessary, of course. And then here we have our jar. So now I've made a new folder called server and I put the jar file, which we just downloaded into that folder. Now we need a way to actually run this. And the easiest way within a Windows computer is to go ahead and click on the path and then type in CMD and press enter. And this will open up our terminal. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, then go ahead and do a quick Google search on how to open up the console for those operating systems. But once you have the console open, no matter which operating system you're on, you want to create a file which is going to make it much easier for us to actually run our server. So within our folder here, I'm going to make a new text file, and I'm going to call this start.bat. Now, if you're on Mac or Linux, you want to name this start.sh instead. So it would look like this. But I'm on Windows, so I'm going to use start.bat. We can right click on this and click on edit or open this in whatever text document you want. And now you want to type in the following code. This will be in the description so you can easily copy and paste it. So I'm going to type Java space dash jar space spigot dash 1.18.1 dot jar, which is the exact file name for our spigot jar right here. So if you renamed yours, make sure you have the correct name for your file inside this text file right here. And afterwards, space, no GUI, which is one word. So we can go ahead and save and close this. And now within our terminal, I can say start.bat. Or if you have start.sh, of course, you would say start.sh instead. Now here we see a bunch of gibberish happening in our console. Here it's going to go ahead and create our server for us. And then no matter which operating system you're on, it will immediately close. And we do have to agree to the end user license agreement here. So go ahead and open up eula.txt and change eula equals false to eula equals true, and then save and close that file. Afterwards, we can go back to our console and just simply press the up arrow to go back to start.bat or start.sh and then press enter to run it again. Now the process of setting up the server might take a few seconds depending on your PC specs. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording until it's done for me. So here we see that it is done. It took 58 seconds for me. And now we can type pl or plugins, and we see that there are zero plugins as expected. Of course, if we go into our plugins folder, we see no .jar files in here. Now I'm wanting to set it up where whenever we go to start our server, it will automatically take our project and move it into our server plugins folder. One thing we don't want to do is to continuously copy and paste things manually because that takes a lot of time. 
and we also never want to run the reload command, the reason for that is something we'll be explaining later on in the series. So what I want to do is I want to modify the start.bat or the start.sh command in order to move our plugin file into our plugins folder. So I'm going to right click on my start file and I'm going to edit it. I'm then going to go into IntelliJ and we're going to set up this project to actually be built. So if I go to build, build artifacts, this is actually grayed out. So I need to click on the gear near the top right and then go to project structure. From here, I can go to artifacts and then I can click on the plus sign. I can then select jar and then jar with modules from dependencies. Now, normally we would select our main class here, but in this case, we don't have one because the spigot library handles the main class for us. So just simply click on okay. And then here we have getting started compile output is automatically going to be pushed inside of the jar. But there's one more thing we have to do. So go ahead and click on apply and okay. And now within the resources folder, we have our plugin.yml. Within here, we see some information such as the name, the project version, our main file path, and we need to actually include this inside of our .jar file. So let's go back to the gear and then go to project structure. And then under artifacts, we want to click on the plus and then select file. We could then go into our project, go into the source, go into main, and then go into resources. And we should have our plugin.yml file right there. So again, that is your main project, source, main, resources, and then plugin.yml. Once you click on it, press OK. And now we see that both the plugin YML and the compile output will be stored inside of the jar so it can actually be used. From here, click on apply and then OK. And now we can go to build, build artifacts, and simply just press enter. And this will actually build this plugin. Here we see a new out folder. If I expand this, we see artifacts, getting started, and then getting started.jar. Now, right now our plugin doesn't do anything. So I want to make sure that I'm printing something to the console. Within spigots, we can do this with bucket.getlogger.info and then print out hello world. And then I also want to print out using bucket.getlogger.info shutting down. So now we're going to see hello world or shutting down whenever a plugin is starting up or shutting down. That way we know it's actually working. And of course, if you want to change the .jar file, we can go back to our project structure and then change the name right here. For example, I can call this one off keys tutorial. And then I also want to right click on getting started.jar right here and then click on rename. And I'm going to call this one off keys tutorial. Now, if I press enter and then apply and OK, I can now rebuild the project. And we then should see a one off keys tutorial jar within our artifacts folder as we see right here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of getting started. And now within here, I want to make sure that this jar is moved into our server's plugins folder every single time we start up our server. So to do that, I'm going to right click here and then I'm going to click on copy path slash reference. And then I'm going to select absolute path right here. So we have now copied the path or the exact directory where this jar is located. So going back into our start.bat or start.sh file, we can now try copying this into our plugins folder. Now for Windows, the command will be copy. But if you're on Mac or Linux, the command is just going to be CP. So if you're on those operating systems, just use CP instead of copy. But I'm on Windows, so I'm going to type out copy. I could then add in a space and two quotes. And within this, I'm going to paste in the exact path to the .jar file, which we just copied from IntelliJ. Then after this ending quote, we want to add in a space, two more quotes, and then dot forward slash plugins which will reference a folder called plugins in the same exact directory as our start file. So here we have our start file and then here we have our plugins folder. So basically before we actually start our server with this line here, we're wanting to copy our plugin into our plugins folder and then start the server. So go ahead and save this. Now, if you still have a server running, you can type in stop to stop the server. And then from there, we can just simply run the script again. So start.bat or start.sh. And here we see one files copied. Now, if I go into the plugins folder, we now see one off keys tutorial.jar. And now we see that our server is going to actually be starting up. Now we see done. And directly above that, we see the text hello world. And this is from our own plugin. If I type in PL, and now we see one plugin on our server, which is one off keys tutorial. Now, if I type in stop, we should see a shutting down message. So I'm going to say that right here. And here we see shutting down. 
So now our server is up and running and everything's working correctly. And whenever we go to compile our plugin, we can now restart our server to get the most up-to-date changes. So now that all of this setup is done, in future videos in this playlist, which will be linked down below, we can actually start making our own custom Minecraft plugins and testing them in-game.